The pinch method estimates soil moisture regimes for specific soil types. There are several informal methods of the pinch method, such as the United States Forest Service ball method, which determines moisture classes regardless of soil texture and groups them into four moisture regimes, dry soils, moist soils, very moist soils, and wet soil. However, most pinch methods integrate the well-established field method adapted from the NRCS, or the Natural Resources Conservation Service Irrigation Guide, which evaluates soil texture. Once soil texture is evaluated, then soil moisture can be estimated from a simple analysis. This is a subjective test and typically gives accurate analysis, but can be off as much as 10%. However, the NRCS states that soil moisture can be estimated to an accuracy of about 5% with an experienced sampler and a more defined texture analysis. If inexperienced with handling soils, it is best to first use this test in conjunction with the gravimetric or time domain reflectometry methods to gain greater experience estimating various soil moisture regimes. This pinch method will use methods adapted from the NRCS irrigation guide and will estimate soil moisture as a percent in 25% increments in efforts to reduce potential error. Soil texture must be estimated before moisture can be evaluated. A flow chart to aid in the process of defining soil texture can be found on the Ecohydrology page through WebCT. Soil moisture will be determined by first adding water to approximately one tablespoon of soil. Take care not to include the duff layer in this hand sample. Water should be added until the sample has a consistency of moldable putty. Then a series of physical questions will be asked in order to determine the soil texture. This series of qualitative questions can be seen in the supplementary flow chart. Nine questions should be asked regarding the physical characteristics of the soil while wet, with question one being, does the soil remain in a ball when squeezed? Question two, does the soil form a ribbon? Question three, does the soil form a ribbon less than one inch long before breaking? Question four, does the soil form a ribbon one to two inches long before breaking? And question five, does the soil form a ribbon two inches or longer before breaking? Question six, does the soil feel gritty? Question seven, does the soil feel smooth? Question eight, does the soil feel neither smooth nor gritty. Finally, question 9 can be asked during any point of the analysis. Question 9, is the soil too wet? If the soil is too wet, then add more soil until the soil becomes the consistency of moldable putty and repeat all questions. The flow chart will prompt the analyzer of which questions to move to, when, and will give the soil texture upon completion of these stepwise questions. Soil moisture can be estimated only after soil texture is properly characterized. Physical observations of the soils will be made at the existing moisture level and compared to the standard NRCS charts. These charts can be found either on the Ecohydrology webpage through WebCT or on the web address seen on this slide. First, obtain a small soil sample at the selected depth using your hand, shovel, probe, or auger. Second, squeeze the soil sample firmly in hand to form a ball. And if possible, squeeze the sample out of your palm in efforts to create a soil ribbon. Finally, observe the soil's ability to ribbon, the firmness, the roughness, 
water glistening, loose particles, soil staining, and soil color. And compare all of these attributes with the available charts through the NRCS. This sample of sandy loam is in the 0 to 25 percent moisture class. Specifically, it's dry, forms a very weak ball, has aggregated soil grains which break away easily from ball. This sample is sand in the 25 to 50 percent moisture class. As you can see, it is slightly moist, forms a very weak ball with well-defined finger marks. With practice, estimating texture and moisture will become easier and results will increase in accuracy while decreasing dependency on the available charts for moisture and texture regimes. Finally, to increase sampling efficiency and organization for a suite of texture and moisture analyses, it is recommended to use the available data sheets available on the Ecohydrology webpage through WebCT.